shit, what's good? What's good, what's good? Just waiting for my boy Isaiah to, to hop on the live real quick. Yo, can you hear me? Philly, Philly J Mass, can you hear me? Give me a thumbs up. Copy. Just waiting for my boy. Designated wrestling was good. I said fix my shirt. Nah, man. This Gucci. I don't got to fix this. <laughs> All right. I got my boy Isaiah right here. Let me send that invite. Yo, yo. What's good, my guy? What's good, brody? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You good? All right, perfect, perfect, man. How you feeling? I've been good, man. Just working away. That's that's all my life's been for a fat minute. <laughs> Just grinding, huh? Yeah. I think what, man? What's it been like? What four years or maybe even longer than that, huh? Since the last when I met you the first time. Yeah, man. I mean, that's how I kind of wanted to start it out too, just to let the the users know or our, or our followers know how we met. We actually met what three, four years ago at Art Basel. Right, I think it was that forty ounce yeah. bounces party. <laughs> yeah, like ASAP Bari and all them were there. Huh? Yeah, man, yo, that was a hell of a night. You plan on going back? Bro, I've been wanting to go back for a minute. Yeah, what about yourself? I don't know. I'm thinking about it. Maybe this year, man. Maybe this yeah. year. I, I probably might uh, go see some fam for Thanksgiving. So you never yeah. know. If if we if we go there, then I might stay another week just to do Art Basel, but. Uh, it's kind of tricky with the traveling, man. You know, all the stuff that's going on right now, so. Yeah, you got to play by the rules. You got to play by the rules, man. Yeah, all right, so, yo, good. just to let some people know, like, the reason why we're doing it so late on the East Coast is because you're three hours behind, right? So you're yeah. in Portland, correct? Uh, Seattle. Oh, all right. Damn, Seattle. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so, so you got you got the Nike headquarters right in your backyard. For real, bro. I'll be trying to get the Nike fast. It's just it's like two hours drive <laughs> to go grab over there. Damn. And that's how, the, that's how I actually started, you know, with a lot of things, bro, because it's, it's it's so accessible. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, it is the perfect spot to be. I, I've seen pictures yeah. of the canvas, uh, the campus. I got I got to make it out there one of these times. Oh, yeah. Let me know. I'll definitely go because that's where I'd like to shop. So, <laughs> yeah. All right. So one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on tonight is because one of the biggest things uh, happening in sneaker in the sneaker world right now is like the custom game. Right. And yeah, I don't know how sure. old you are, but I think I'm a little bit older than you. And to see where is that right now is crazy to me because I'm going to keep it a stack. Growing yeah. up, I couldn't go to school with custom sneakers, man. They, they would have been on your ass, bro. No, bro. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. It's, man, it's so, like I'm, 20, I'm 25. So okay. I, I, I didn't okay. make my first sneaker until I was like 23. Oh, wow. That, yeah, I, I used to just rock the plain whites all through school. That was, that was my thing. All day, right? So, how did you get into the sneaker customized game? When did that light bulb go off for you? Uh, man. So the first jump for me was when uh V Loan when I was going through my little hype beast phase. V Loan mm. dropped their little custom. They look when they do the all the drawing, all the market writing. Mm -hmm. They dropped that custom. Yeah. Um, 
I was like, man, it's dope. It looks it looks fun. I was just talking to my brother, man. So I was like, man, maybe I should just cook up my own kick, just act funny with it, go wild with it. And uh, just, bro, I went, got a pair of forces, got a pack of Sharpies, and got some spray paint cans, just some straight. And went Home to work. Depot rattle, Home Depot rattle cans and just went to work. <laughs> and I was just in my house, just in my apartment, just going nuts with it. And I was writing random stuff. Because that's how theirs was. It was just a bunch of little doodles. Little doodles. And then, like, with me, like, you, I started seeing that, like, oh, man, the cuss game is actually bigger than what – because, like, I seen it just for that singularity moment. But then, actually, I was like, oh, man, this stuff is actually conversing. Started – and then I caught a hold of um, the shoe surgeon. Yeah, you know. And that's, like, with me is, you know, I'm I'm textiles over graphics. And I like mm. sewing. I like – you know, yeah. I, you know, with – for me, as a standpoint, as people, we like to be hands-on. We like to feel things. It's the first thing we do every time we grab a shoe. You want to mm-hmm. feel it. You want to see all That's the nice. layers and conversions. So I was like, man, um, I was like, okay, this little, this little scribble custom. You know, when I started, um, somebody stopped me at a festival. You know, shout out my guy Shakir and Amir uh, out mm-hmm. here. And uh, you know, they're they do their thing out here, and they do a lot of fashion stuff, music stuff. And they stopped me, and they're like, yo, you do customs? I was like. Yeah, <laughs> you like nah, dude. And, and, and it's crazy like, you yeah. brought up you brought up V Loan because they had a few Air Force Ones that were fired before Bari got caught with that little incident. But yeah, they did. They had an event in Harlem, and one day I'm walking to work, and the event was literally down the block from me, and I didn't know. That's when he came out with For the uh, with the black and orange ones, Air Force Ones, the high tops. Yeah, and he had yeah. like that premium leather with it, with that fire style leather. Yeah, beautiful. They were saying man. that was like one of the best collabs to jump, and then of course he had his great downfall. Yeah, <laughs> you know, but I, I felt like that was the start of a beautiful partnership, and they would have been like four or five sneakers in into that relationship, and they would have probably oh, yeah. bodied a lot of things, right? So, nah, he had a good plug right there on his hands. Nah, the plug was amazing. All right, so you're saying yeah. that it kind of happened by chance, right? So now you're about two years into this. You, you, you flip it customs, break down what is the design process. And when I say process, I mean, like, how do you come up with the colorways or the concept for each sneakers? Is it based off what the clientele want? And usually what's the timeline for that? Like, if I order something for you right now, how quick can I get it? So timeline, because, you know, when I first started, I thought, like, customers, like, I thought timeline was, like, the premier satisfaction for customers, mm-hmm. you know? Because it's like when you go into a store and you buy it, you want it the same day. So I was mm-hmm. like, man, let me fire this off, get it off as fast. But like right now, I tell my customers, I tell them all two weeks. You know, I give you, two give weeks. me, give me, give me, or I say seven to 10 days, you know, because we also got to take time. I got to, you know, if I'm providing a shoe, we got to take account and, you know, I need to get a hold of your shoe first, you know, because sometimes, you know, I get custom orders where they're like, hey, man, I already got the shoe. Can I drop this off at your studio and you mm-hmm. go to work or, can I just pay it all out right here in one walk, get the shoe, do the custom, get back to when you can. And, you know, for me, I always try to do same day pickup downtown at the Nike, like Nike store. But if mm, I can, I got okay. it. I'll do, I'll do the, I'll do the shipping and just get it taken in. And then from there, you know, before, like before I like, you know, I do, I do payment up front too. So it's like with me, we'll go in depth with your design. You know, uh, are you looking for graphics? Like mm-hmm. a lot of things I've noticed is a lot of people, have an idea of what they want, but they don't know what they want. Or they can't those, execute it. That's yeah, facts. they haven't executed. So they're like, hey, can you, they'll throw me some bullet points and they're like, do you mm-hmm. mind cooking up something on your iPad? And can you, you know, can you show me a little stencil design and you can do that? And bro, before I even had the iPad, I was like Google printing out stuff off the, like I'd get the Air Force <laughs> One Google print out, bro. And I had color pencils in my house, in my bedroom. And I was like, Here's what I can show you. And I was like, I would always say, it's very elementary, mm-hmm. but, you know, just trust me and I can do it. And then, um, and I know you're stuff. telling the truth, too, because I could never finish my designs on Nike ID, man, because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. No. Nah. And then it's like with the iPad, like um, me and my buddy Jack, we did his whole design off the iPad. And I think we were in the, we were at a coffee shop doing his Jack, uh, doing his custom, bro. And it took like two hours because the iPad is just, okay. Yeah. Pull this patch, erase it. Don't like that. Swap it out. Do this. But it's dope when you actually get the complete design because that's mm-hmm. your instant gratification right there. So you fire it off, and you know. So he was so one question, of few... my fault. Uh, when you're using the iPad, um, you have your own template, or like, yeah. How, how does that yeah. work? Is it a special program? 
Uh, so for me, I just use uh, I just straight up use Photoshop, straight uh, up. Just okay, okay. And I'll just like you can literally, I'll straight up Google image Air Force One stencil. You can get the hollow, you know, the PNG, get the clear background and stuff, and you can just straight. Either wow. if they want a colored one, you can just switch the you know to the airbrush icon and just color in between the lines, or you can start um you know pull a pattern off the internet and then you know I'll overlay it over the shoe and then I'll erase where it's not where it's supposed to be. And then so you'll just have that toe box or you'll have the switch mm -hmm. just showing your pattern. Oh, and then um, there's a science behind it. Okay. Yeah, it's a little mixed around. You know, for me, that's like still my struggles because, man, I like, you know, my brain, I race all day. So, like, Racing. I'll have your whole design, but they want to see it. But I already know what it's going to look like. But, you know, mm -hmm. you, that's just – that's part of the business. You got to learn your own patience as well. So you just break it down for them. You give them their satisfaction. Give them their opportunity to change what they want to change. And then mm – -hmm. Or you'll get those customers who be like, yo, I want this. This is all I want and uh, nothing more. Like, I'll do yeah. your design and then I'll throw suggestions and they'll be like, nope, nope. And I'd be like, bless up. Well, your shoe's finished then. <laughs> yo, so if somebody goes on to your IG, right, um, your rugged design IG, 99% of your custom kicks are Air Force One, right? And they, yes. mean so much, they mean so much to New Yorkers. What makes the Air Force One, especially the white and white, the best shoe to design? Is it because it's a plain white sneaker, or is it because of the texture, the uh, the leather in it, the material that they use? Yeah, so I think uh, I would say the Air Force One is because it's because a lot of people that they don't like you don't recognize. There's a whole like beginning. There's a prep stage process to actually mm -hmm. doing your shoe, okay. and that's something I found out the hard way. You know, I I think you know I made a custom for a buddy and didn't prep the sneaker so like when i got done painting and i pulled it away it was uh the paint was runny and it was seeping and like it spread because the paint i use is oil based it's very you got to shake it up it's very thin so it runs mm -hmm. if you over overdo it and you know that's what i learned but i think to go back to your question the air force one i'd say it's the most iconic because it's it's a silhouette canvas there's a lot of big large open you know platforms and layers <laughs> The you can get all your logos toes. in there. <laughs> yeah, the swoosh is big. The toe box is big. You got the top toe. You got the heel. And then, you know, when you prep a shoe and, like, when you go into, like, whether you want to paint or um, airbrush or just rather just, you know, freehand or anything. So, like, what I do is you take acetone. And, like, a lot of people don't recognize um, why the leather is so shiny on an Air Force One or any leather-based shoe. They put a they put a finish coating. There's a co there's a clear oh. coating on there. Okay. That allows you, you know, to let, you know, let liquid bases run off, you know. Mm. Obviously, I mean, it's a shoe. It's not going to be perfect. It's not like you're putting crepe spray or anything when they comes with this shoe. But, you know, you have to get that layer. So, like, if you – what I noticed when I first doing it, if I – when I took the acetone and I rubbed at it, you'll get, like, a matte rough kind of finishing on that okay. shoe. And then, you know, the paint – that you use that I use the Angelus paint it comes with a finisher so you can okay. add that gloss coating back on when I'm finished so when you add the acetone basically after stripping it down that's what allows the paint to stick on to the sneak even better yeah and it um, okay you know it allows you to like add less coats it'll, okay the shoe uh, will take better and it'll, yeah. you can just go to town and like with me is like you know I also I got my own stencil machine so if I got a very specific logo that I'm not comfortable with doing Mm -hmm. I can transfer it and I can just stick it right there and just color in between the lines <laughs> and do details afterwards. And I figured that out by watching you. I went to YouTube University and found everything. Most, <laughs> yeah. So my favorite customers that like, I mean, customizers that I started watching before I jumped into it, bro, I was like, man, this guy's a, a monster at his, his freehand game. And I was like, man, I don't know if I'll be that good because I can't just pull out a piece of paper all the time and just mm -hmm. go to town. But then they're like, let me show you how I get started. They leaned over here print out their whole stencil and I was like oh okay okay I can do that for you sure. can do that so let me yeah. ask you in your opinion since the Air Force One is the go-to sneaker to get customized if is there another silhouette that you feel that like can replace it in the future or is it always going to be Air Force One uh, I think it's Converse uh, I think it's Converse, Converse. Chuck Taylor's Converse and uh I would say Chuck's and if the infl uh, like the inflation of pricing wasn't so bad, Nike Dunks for sure. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the game is messed dunks, up, man. I w I wish I would have kept mine, man. I'm punching myself every day. <laughs> yeah, my S. I I was a skater kid growing up, man. And I was like, man, I used to make moms buy me SDs all the time, and I'm like, man, all if I would have held on to them. I could have just been like just sitting here selling SBs and just getting down like that. Even the regular colorways are going for a grip now. Insane. Yeah. 
you can't even get the like um uh, I did a custom pair uh you know the customer was stricky he wanted to do a start with a blank white um blank white Nike dunk straight up had no problem with pricing mm-hmm. I was like, man, this is only on stock X or resale price. And he was like, whatever. Mm-hmm. I was like, all right, you're about to pay 400 for a custom <laughs> to even start off with. And he was like, just do it, man. Just do just it. Do this it. is the shoe. I want a Nike Dunk, you know, because uh, he liked, you know, his favorite shoe was the Air Max, but he only liked OGs. So he's like, man, I want something to idolize, but I want Nike Dunk. And I was like, all right. Nike Dunk. Hey, man, if you don't got a price line, let's run it all day. <laughs> Dude, if you got, hey, if you got the bread for it, man, go for it, you know? Yeah. And, um, kind of switching over a, l- a little bit. I think it was maybe two or three Sundays ago we featured you on Designated Kicks for some custom yeah. cleats that you got, uh, that you design or help design, right? So, yes, how, first of all, how did you even connect with uh, the football player? I, th- I believe he plays for Denver, correct? Yes. He how did that Denver. all come? Yeah. How did that come about? So, like a lot of people who don't know and are new to me, me, I used to live in Denver for like. Man, fourteen years. I want to say I'm. I'm. Oh shit! I'm yeah. from Seattle, but I'm fully raised in Denver. You know, oh, okay. I moved out. I moved back home to Seattle five years ago. Okay, six years ago. So, um, you know, I have a friend out there who's man. He's a masterpiece when it comes to cutting hair. He's beautiful with his talents out there. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, first met him when he was cutting in the back of a studio and like just doing a cafe thing. But now he's like he's he's pretty much a celebrity barber. Man, he cuts. He cuts the, the college football team, and, you know. Oh, he's the plug, uh, then. That's the plug. Yeah, man. <laughs> so, uh, you know, he's a creative mind, too, man. Mm-hmm. And he cuts the Broncos players' hair. And he, you know, one of the uh, the players, you know, why he was cutting, just popped off the idea that, you know, he, I want some custom cleats done. I don't really know how to, you know, who to jump into that. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, me and uh, Matt have always talked about, like, you know, every time I fly back home and I link up with him, he always wants to create something. And, you know. He, you know, that's um, – he was doing, like, the little um, – the um, the vintaging where you aging sneakers and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, he was messing around with that, and he finally was just – he hit me up. And then um, one day I just looked on my Instagram story after I did some cleats for a high schooler out there, and I seen, like, a bunch of Bronco players are watching my story. Mm-hmm. And then he was um, – then he was just screenshotting my stuff. He hit me up, and he was like, yo, man, uh, one of the players, it's a green light. He wants to do it. Ooh. And uh, – I was like, I I was bugging him every day, and I was like, "Did you get this cleat? Did you get the cleat? Did you get the cleat, man? Send it over. Let's do it." So, did he send you all white or all black? What was the original colorway of that cleat? Oh uh, man, so he sent me a uh, a royal one cleat, black oh. and blue only. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So that's the amazing part I would say about that custom. And um, at first we were gonna do um like a Halloween theme to you, like a um uh, a Chucky cleat. You okay. Because he. Uh, that was one of the things he was he mentioned when he was getting his haircut, and Matt was like, "Man, I think." And I was like, "Hella excited!" Because I was like, "Yo, mm-hmm. Chucky, you can." I went and got like the the, um, the toy box, and I was gonna clear put the clear plastic in, and his shoe was gonna come in a toy box mm-hmm. instead of the original boxing. And stuff. That would have been that would have been fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So hopefully we can we can jump back to that. I think he, I think you know the Broncos play on Halloween Day, so I think he wants to do something fun. So but, what um, was the what was the timetable for that uh, when you got the cleat? You you created it and then you shipped it right back to him. Uh, so it took a solid two weeks, but man, he mm-hmm. blessed me with the opportunity to go to a game, meet him in person. So I packed that shoe, put it in my backpack, and I flew home for a weekend. And um, man, just the um, you know me, um, you know like the the, uh, the the Chucky design changed, man. But it changed by the blessings. He was uh, he wanted to wear my cleat in game, and you know NFL has that stipulation rule where you know the whole team guidelines and the whole if you wear an off brand, you got to warm up in the cleat and that's that. So he wanted to go straight team color with it. And that was dope. Okay. I was like, man, I'd rather see my shoe on field than in warm ups and actually in game. And, uh, man, that cleat took a long time because I had to, first of all, you know, I had to prime the whole shoe white, you know, mm-hmm. and then, um, we, we pretty much, we did, uh, the shattered backboard design. That was, uh, Matt was like, let's run with that. Fire. Let's get some, let's get some orange out there because that's their home jersey way and I was like yeah and he was uh he was like let's 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 throw the most popular you know custom twist that's going on everyone's Travis Scott in their swoosh Travis now. Scott reverse yeah 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 and I was like bet and then uh he was like and then we'll well I was like man obviously change I was like don't do black swooshes let's switch it to the dark navy he's like yeah. of course and then um but I was like, man, you know what and then I texted him I was like bro I'm doing navy blue gator skin on there I don't he was like I, 
I was like, man, don't even care if he says no. It's going to be dope. Let's run it. He's like, man, do it anyways. Bro, when and I seen he, it, I was like, oh, nah, you body that. I was like, you yeah. know, I got I to gotta feature it on the site, bro, because <laughs> you body that. But, yo, you just broke some game. Like, I didn't know. So you're saying that they can't play in custom cleats or they have to warm up and then they can play in it. How does that work? So if NFL players, uh, you know, if they do customs, like, you know how um, Odell Beckham does them wild cleats mm -hmm. and, like, they'll be gold or whatever thing he wants to do. So for the NFL stipulation, what I found out through the player is those they can only be warm-up cleats. You know, um, wow. and if, yeah, NFL hasn't fully made the uh, the uniform transition like the NBA does where they mm -hmm. can just do whatever. Uh, everything still has to be a coordination of team colors. So he was like – so, you know, you can do whatever you design with, but it has to conflict within black, white, orange, and blue. You know, so those are the four colors we got to play with. And I was like, well, anybody want to see black? And I was like, don't do all white. So let's just try to verge all three in there. Yeah. So that, that's how we ran with it. And the Broncos team colorway is low-key fire, too. So it is, man. It, it, yeah, they're, <laughs> and, and they're... Uh, their white jerseys are fire to me, but their orange jerseys, I, my favorite color is orange. So that's yeah, what I was that's like. That's it. Yeah, that's yeah. it. All right, so like, now I'm going to put you on the hot spot now. All right? Well, yeah. Yo, if you can design any sneaker or cleat for any three athletes playing right now, and you only get three, who would you pick? Number one, I'd want to make a boxing shoe for Javante Davis. Woo! Uh, that's my boy. That's my boy. Number two, uh, yeah, that, that's my guy, bro. That's my uh, dude. <laughs> number two, Shy, uh, Shy Alexander for OKC. Okay. Uh, just because, man, I, he's a big fashion idolized for me. And then l number three, number three, man. Uh, man, let's go with uh, – let's get iconic with it, man. If I can – you want current athletes, huh? Current athletes right now. Man, cause you know I was gonna go Kobe. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, like Mamba, yeah, LeBron, man, for sure, LeBron. LeBron? Oh yeah, nah. Yeah. I mean, so I think Kith uh, was the only ones who actually designed uh, a version of LeBron's, right? That's the only other that, designer, right? That like uh, that rose pattern, huh? That black yeah. and white silhouette, right? Mm -hmm. Zipper up. Yep, man, I think the fifteen. Yeah, no, that was fire. Ronnie killed that one. Yeah. It, was, it was the yeah. LeBron fifteen. Yo, I'm shocked. I swore you was gonna go with Odell, man. I feel like he, I feel. He, I mean, Odell. He has the limelight, but I mean, he's just Odell's Odell. He's amazing. He's got the he got the sauce for sure, yeah. and he's got the custom cleat game to a T. But I figured, man, let me go. Who, what I want to rock with? Yo, Sean, if you in here, bro. Call Odell, man. We got some cleats for Odell, man. Make that happen for us, bro. Yeah, <laughs> that's my that's my that's my boy who started designated report too, Sean. So that's oh, Odell's his man. That's his homie. Hey, no, you know? he's number one. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's all my like, yo. Let me throw him the alley, yo, Sean. Hook us up, bro. All right, we going yeah. to the game. The Javante right. Davis, I think, would be wild though, bro. Imagine you design something for Javante, and he just knocks some homie straight out. Yeah, you're, you're and it's only he's the only athlete in the room. Which I mean, one other, but it's you. They came to see one person. I mean, you yo, know, if you're on talk, his side, that's the power of social media, though, man. Like, all it takes is one DM for these for these dudes to see and yeah. reply. Man, there was a guy out here. Uh, damn, I forgot his tag, but he did a, uh, some powder blue off white. He did one of the the lot dunks, mm -hmm. and I think I looked at his page, and I think he had maybe. 5,000 out here, man, Off-White caught a hold of his custom, posted on their page, and he's at, like, 17K followers now. Easily. Deaf fast. Easily, I, bro. I, I was talking to my guy yesterday. It only mm -hmm. takes one project. It one. One project and the right eye. One. One. Or, yeah. or, or, or even, yeah, or, or even the right athlete, man. And it's crazy yeah. that the NFL hasn't switched over to the NBA because they have the my cleat, my cause. Like, sometimes the NFL, they, they be in their own way. A lot of the times, yeah, man, and yeah, you gotta change. Do. Yeah, you gotta change with the times, man. And it's cool because Tyler Lockett out here, the receiver for the Hawks, he uh he literally posts his warm up cleat every day, every game. He's like, this Sunday's warm up cleat inspired by this, made by this. So he makes sure to spread that love too. Oh, so of course. Just, you just gotta get one, just get one locked in. Yeah, and, and you can only control what you can control. So just keep on bodying, right. keep on bodying the work. Right? Yeah, straight up. And I'm just, I'm still. Fresh in the game compared to a lot of cats out here. So, yo, it's, even, I'm patient. I'm not even panicking. Either. 
and and that's a fact because moving on, like kind of like to the next question I had, right? Because you've mentioned shoe surgeon, you have Mache out here killing. You also have John Geiger, and when I follow yeah. these guys on social media and saw and like and have watched them for a few years, first of all, number one is a lot of work. Number two, there's more that goes into than just fucking painting a sneaker. is 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 tremendous. Like, yeah. You got to know how to sew. You got to know your material. So with that mm-hmm. being said, what is the ultimate goal of Isaiah Brown and Rugged Design? Do you kind of want to customize and in the future have your own actual shoe like these guys? Or is it kind of trial and error? Like, where do you see yourself in five years? Man, I'm going to say it first so no one can take it. Uh, I don't want to be a shoe surgeon. Um, my, mm. my whole mission statement with creating and making art has always been for the youth. I've always mm. wanted, like, my whole dream has just been working with the – Troubled youth, inner city kids. So Beautiful. I want to learn all these skills, master all these skills. My ultimate goal and end game for Rugged is to um, – I want to have a half and half. I want an after-school program, you know, where you can pretty much pay an intuition and we'll have projects for kids to come into the summer after school. But then I'll have – of course, I want a front and center. Like, I want to have a split where I can have – almost like a neighboring store would be dope where it's like a Rugged school and then a Rugged store. So, mm. but but my biggest goal would be able to get a whole classroom full of kids get some blake sneakers running um you know and walk them through the process and pretty much so you know it's a it's a still a shoe surgeon aspect but i want to do all sorts of fashion yeah. i guess i would say yeah. so it'd be you know a project of the week type thing you know like, like pants and all this other stuff yeah and and yeah. And it's funny you say kids too, because I, you know, when Sue Surgeon came to New York, man, I was like, all right, let me let me take one of these classes. I'm like, a thirty five hundred, and it's like, <laughs> oh, I was looking yeah. last week. I'm, I'm like, like, I'm gonna do this to patent my skills and get a signature shoe. And I was like, what? Poor man. Like, that's that's what I'm saying, right? So and then I seen him ripping up the Travis Scotts on his Instagram. And I was like, well, that's why. <laughs> that's that's what I'm saying, right? And he, I mean, he gives you all the material, but like, let's keep it a stack. How many people out here can really, if this is their passion? throw down four bands to learn how to make shoes, man. And to hear that you're trying to do something with trouble, you, that, that's phenomenal because they don't yeah. get these resources, you know? Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's, uh, you know, when it comes to him, you you get to create the, a masterpiece. But, I mean, there's – that's – you're talking about funding when you come to, to a game like him. And it's oh, like, yeah. you know, I understand what he's doing, but, you know, for me it would be more about, you know, the mission statement. I want to complete with my end goal is, you know, if I can – steer a kid straight or turn the kid, you know, let them expose them to some art early. Um, you know, I think for me, creating was just because of art. There's no boundaries. Opinions no. don't exist in art. So, you know, um, there's no level of competition. If you like it as a creator, that's just, and it's the best thing ever. Yo, my boy Saint Soho, who you met at Art Basel, says yeah, the same, same thing yeah. every single time, bro. It's just like when you're doing art, Outside opinions don't matter, man. It's what you bring nah. and, and what you can be uh, or how you can be creative in your own world. Yeah. Man. So that's, that's phenomenal, man. And we have a right, you know, we have a right to we, level of expression is endless. So it's putting something on your feet, something that you made will always give, you know, that's that's off the top with it. It's, you know, you made it, you love it, now you rocking it. But see, a type of program like that, man, I feel like once that gets off the ground, you'll have supporters, man. Even if it's through a partnership with the NFL because they're trying to do their, you know, uh, their Play 60 initiatives, the NBA always try to do something with community. So, you know, when you get that ball rolling, you go to these companies and say, hey, this is what I'm doing for the Trouble Youth. I know you guys are big in the community. There's no reason, you know, on the outside looking in where they wouldn't support that movement that you're trying to do or even Nike for that. Yeah, absolutely. And that's like, and that's one thing I've always thought, like, you know, let me get more developed, more Mm -hmm. more going. I need to, you know, I want to... I got to start working on, you know, building content so people can automatically know who I am, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And then it's, it'd be dope to definitely reach out, you know, even in, like you said, it, you'll, you can even draw investors into that purpose. So, you know, oh, yeah. it's, it's all, it can, it's all an upward hill. So for me, I'm super confident in it. And, um, you know, I'm just going through the process like I'm supposed to do. I, I mean, as cliche as it sounds, it's one, it's one day at a time, right? It really is, man. I because I always tell people like, for me, I was I was never into art. Like with me, I was, you know, I was a sport kid. I always wanted to sport and skateboard. And then you know, as I started finding a love for fashion, you know, mm-hmm. for me, you know, I've been doing this, you know, actually pushing merch and customs for two years. 
but I've been messing around with fashion and like, you know, falling forward, you know, learning to mess up. You know, I'm like, I, I've made the ugly gear. I've made the mess up. <laughs> I've, I've lost money. Have, I've yeah. gained money. I've had to mm-hmm. restart. So, and it's like, bro, I've been messing with rugged and the image of rugged for like, Six years, man. I know so you like, always got a new logo, man. Like I don't know. Yeah. I know. No, I'm just like, bam, it's dope. I'm gonna post it, but it's <laughs> like, I do like with me. I'm gonna actually officially coordinate. You know, next month in November, I'm gonna have a dope pop up. So I'm actually gonna coordinate a full function and post attitude and just like give a little capsule. I guess you can say, like a lot of people like to say these days. So yeah, you know, I just you know my head be rushing, so I be all night making stuff. I'm like, oh, it's dope, post it, but I'm not gonna make it right now. I got a, I got a whole, you know, a list of stuff. You know, my brother be like, "Stop, man! What are you doing?" I'd be like, "Man, it's dope, though." You know, I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna post. I'll be like, "I'll post this for two hours. Let me do that." And he's like, "And this part, I think I, I remember one of the shirts that you made was from Twisted Metal, right?" Yeah, it the was. video game. Yo, that game was like way before your time too. So when I seen it, I'm like, "Yo, this is crazy." Yeah, man. A lot of my other, uh, you know, I hang out with a lot of older people. And like, okay. You know, one of my best friends, man. He's he's. He's he's cutthroat in the in the vintage game. He knows all the old games, all the no shows, and then my pops, man, he be all over it too. So oh, for real? I, you know, I just I, I get a little you know, I get a little season on me here and there <laughs> from a lot of the older people I be messing with, and they know a lot of stuff like that too. So it you know it's dope. Yeah. All right. So what's what's your feelings on the overall sneaker game right now, man? Because right now I'm I'm, I'm hating it, man. Because number one, I don't win anything on sneakers app, and then it's two, yeah. like, dude. I can't even get a pair of Barclays. Yeah. No, yeah. There's no love. It's messed um, up, you know? Yeah, for sure. So uh, what, what do you feel like is going on with the sneaker game? Are you in love with it or are you over it? Uh, for me, man, I was the kid, you know, I wanted to cop all the sneaks. And it's like, as I got older, I was just, man, I'm good, dog. <laughs> 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 like, hey, man, I got bills. Like, I, you, I showed you that sneakers log, man. I only had one win, but if I, if my phone, I had my old phone, I should show you the not selected. It just goes, goes, and awesome. and uh, you know, for me, it's. I think the sneaker game has turned more into a business. It is for me. Mm-hmm. You know, I was I was copping sneaks to rock and stock. It was never to cash out and flip. And um, you know, for the guys who know how to do it. You know, I got a gutty. I got a few buddies out here, man. They're awesome at it, you know. But the, like, people have always asked me, but I was like, you know, that's not why I buy sneakers. You know, I want to. I don't care about people. I, mean, I don't care about creases. I don't care about nothing of that. I just so man. But I, you know, I think it took out. It takes the fun out of it. It takes the love and passion out of sneakers. Um, you know, when you got box, you got. <laughs> You got one guy who came for one shoe, but he brought fifteen homies. With him. <laughs> <laughs> and just, just yeah, they be just, squad deep, yo, bro. Yeah, they be out. They be doing it out here too, man. You know, you got one guy who got in line, but he brought his whole. He brought. You know, that's I used to do it too. Yeah. Man. I wanted when I wanted four pairs of one shoes. I used to put my mom on a ticket and everything. Put right. my little brother in there, but man, just you know, walk in there. Here's the money. Just go get the shoes. But now it's like I'm gonna clean out the stock so I can sell it back to you for double. <laughs> and 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 I blame more the stores because yo, if you can buy a sneaker for one fifty, flip it for eight hundred, I can't really be mad at you, bro. Nah, man, you can't. It's easy lick, easy lick, right? But yeah. I think like a bodega, they came out with a statement talking about yo, a bunch of the bots bought the sneakers. I'm like, we've been dealing with this for like six, seven years. Y'all can bro, figure it out. Yeah, bro, that is one. Actually, it's funny you said that. That's like one website I stopped buying sneakers because all their New Balance collabs are so filthy. They're gone as soon as they drop. Done. Gone. It's done, though. Like, I can't – every time I was like, oh, this dope, man, I'm like, 574, gone as soon as it drops. And I'm like, man – and you don't even get the alert that it dropped. It's gone that fast. Bro, (laughs) bro, it's a bad game where you can't get, like, Chris Webbers and and, and, and – Charles Barkley's out here, man. I'm like, okay, Jordans yeah. and Travis, I understand. But y'all 19. Y'all never y'all don't even know who Charles Barkley is. I can't get a yeah. Barkley now. Yeah. And it's <laughs> like I feel like that younger generation below me, man, they figured out how to generate money without doing much, you know? It's and amazing. This whole social media movement and stuff. So like you said, 19, you got kids who don't even know what's dropping, but they Google that heat and they know that it has a tar- it has a price tag after it's bought. So whether they like it or not, they're about to go get 15 pairs of them. Listen, so making, si- making six figures a year flipping sneakers, 
is someone's like Fortune 500 company job. Yeah. You're probably putting in less work. So we just, right. to me, we just got to find a better dynamic. There's too much technology yeah. out here for us to keep on catching these L's. But then it gets to a <laughs> point where like, I'm getting older and I'm like, you done caught so much L's. Yeah. And then I feel like like my homies out here, man, they who do it pretty good at it, man. They got so good at it to where they have to, they man, they be working nonstop. They be grinding, they're posting, they're yeah. trying to connect. You know, I got one one homie who's constantly on the move, driving back and forth, doing drop offs and pickups. And then my other homie actually just opened his own store in the mall. And he, man, those guys be working. I'm like, damn, it's crazy how you know we went from hopping in line on a Wednesday morning, getting our little reserve ticket, and coming back at Saturday in the morning and picking up. To where it's like you gotta be present now. You got no choice if that if that's what you want to do. You got to eat off that heat. Yeah, so. and you, you got to be committed too, man. Because the stores around my way is the same guys. They, like you said, they're always ten, fifteen deep, and it's like do yeah. you that now? Nah. But what <laughs> straight up, that's right. how it is. All right, so yo, we're gonna get to like my favorite part of the show Most or recent pickups, right? So. I know since you design a lot of stuff, so I'll let you either recent p uh, pickups that you bought or anything that you just uh, designed, like your last few designs, right? So I'm going to actually go first because I didn't, I don't even remember how I got these sneakers, but it's some J's. And the reason I copped it and the reason why I always cop it is because it was my first pair of J's I ever bought. So whenever they get retro, I always buy it. And to me, these are my favorite Jordans. I think another person would be like, okay, they're all right. But yeah. it's the 11 lows, the PE colors. No, those are fire. Yo, I done had these like 10 times already. No, those are hard. My and cousin had the, uh, the turquoise colorway. I, yo, and I didn't even know. I think Mike played a few games in them. I thought he just wore them. But Okay, that's what I didn't know. That's, that's free game. Google, right I did not know that. You'll see him, like, I think it's maybe three or four games he actually wore them, which is crazy because they never wore a low cut back in the days in the 90s. Yeah. But uh, they definitely improved on the material. The leather's better. And, yeah. I mean, that's one thing I noticed about Jordan, man. I think that, that material is coming back how it used to be. Nah, they had to. Yeah. But, no, that shoe was, was fire. 2010s, the quality of Jays was not, was not holding, man. No, nah, it wasn't, bro. Uh, man, and my brother copped some Jordan ones that All Star Weekend pair, and I grabbed it. And I was like, man, this, this ain't no Jordan one that I got in the closet. <laughs> but <laughs> now nah, it's different. I'm like, yeah, and I was like, two hundred. Give me some quality, bro. Yeah, he finally stopped being stingy. <laughs> Listen, all right, man. Break out the vault, man. What you got, what you got for? Hey, so the one I'm about to bring out, super simple but dope, man. I've been trying to cop this a shoe of this brand for a long time and i'm gonna go with the shy, Ooh, I just shy. pro leathers um wait I've actually told him alexander's yeah these are his pro leathers he oh dropped. he's on converse okay yeah so they yeah. got the sga and um it's funny bro obviously it's pro leathers they went it's converse yes uh they went for 70 bucks and he was posting like Funny things on Stock X, but it was like I don't know if it's real or not. I haven't done no research, but mm -hmm. like people were posting them for like eight hundred fifty bucks, nine hundred. So if if that is real, <laughs> I got a size nine. <laughs> Dead stock. I haven't even tried them. Yo, you, yet. yo, you need to Google that after we get off. Google that. <laughs> you know you got your emergency nine hundred right there. Yeah, it's straight up. And like I mean, I would say this is my dude. I've been trying to uh cop a pro leather converse you know just mm -hmm. because it's the history behind the shoe and um i've been trying to just cop a pair for a long time that i actually want to throw on foot i feel like this shoe it, it it's it's the the nike blazer before you know for the old like for the ogs like if you, i never if thought you, of that yeah if you don't uh i mean it's like if you trace way back in time man the high top pro leather was it was a hoop shoe it was on court and i've been trying to like find a pair that i've actually wanted to rock and you know, he launched this colorway, and um, it's his first shoe, too, though. But, no, it's just filthy. I'm excited to rock this. So, one. where did you end up getting that? Was it at a store or online? Uh, It was a 7 a.m. release on the Converse website, and they sold out, actually. Yeah. That's what I was surprised, too. Uh, I've never seen a Converse job sell out. Dude, sneakerheads know every sneaker now, man. They do, man. Me and my homie were copped a pair, and I was like, man, these is fire when I got them first. I was like, I can finally throw these on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What else you got? You got any? You got any uh, designs for us that you've been working on? What, what you got in the vault? 
Yeah, man. Um, my heart is custom yet because yep. there was no design. There was no discussion. It was, here's this shoe and run with it. And it's, uh, man, it's been this easy. Uh, uh. This is a, a, a hard shoe, but a fun shoe. Because it could, like, Kanye added the suede. He added the different color tones. He added the, um, you know, he added the colors, the tones, and the material. So, you know, you got suede, mesh, and leather on here. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the gray is on me right now. I actually took acetone. I've been pulling the, I've been stripping the whole shoe from its colorways. And uh, so, you know, I'm going to go run with this one. I'm going to run with the cool gray, go with the midsole. The accents actually was gray, so I stripped that. I'm going to keep the OG orange right here. Okay. Here I'm going to go with another orange, or I'm going to go with another off-tone gray. But actually, with me, I'm going to go back to my roots and why I've done it. Um, so it comes with these meshing patches. So, you know, I like the suede and I like the leather, but I don't like the mesh on the shoe. I picked out what I didn't like, and I picked out what I liked the least. So, you know what? That's what we're going to rip apart. And um, we're going to fill it in with – some snakes in so we'll be some doing some sewing doing some patch sewing some filling sewing uh with oh, man, snakes man, in pull up like uh ted dibiase out here man <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> straight up date the snake put these shoes on and jump off a turnbuckle yo king i'll see <laughs> boy my boy king i'll see this one he said he won a pair but he not even gonna try yeah. oh get you the yeezys mail it in bro he got you bro and we're gonna rip the whole shoe apart. i always say every time i post my custom i post step one destroy the shoe Bomb. You know, and uh, this is like that. So, man, that's what I'm currently working on. And, uh, you know, it feels like to me, it's uh, the design in head. And well, actually, when you say it out loud, it's, it's fast. But uh, I've had this shoe for like a month now and haven't touched it because I didn't, you know, it's a it's a solid shoe. But like, it's I don't I didn't know how to start. I didn't know what to work with. But I was like, man. You know, I want to. I like the. I like the playing field it starts off with, and obviously, it's not a blank canvas as well. So, you yep. know, I had to play in my company. What, what else can? How much can you strip it down? Actually, right? Yeah, and it's like at this point, you're talking about making a flat lay. You know, and that's where you take the sole off, you put, turn it into a piece of paper, and literally strip it completely, just like you see in shoe surgeon when you start off with that blank canvas. And you know, it's like. You can't strip this colorway because it's, it's suede. It's already, you know, the best I can do is go get some suede dye and, you know, change it. But I like this cool gray. I'm a big fan of cool gray. You know, cool gray 11s are one of my favorite kicks. So, oh, bro. You know, listen, I figured. God, listening. I <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this year, I'm asking you for yeah. the cool gray 11s, bro. Or a ski mask. Man. Please, I just want that one. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> you know, I've been going a few. Yeah, that's me right now, bro. I was like, I've been going a few years striking <laughs> out, man. Let me just, just give me one, and I'll never, I'll never if, touch the app if again. If I win the Cool Gray Elevens, I will yeah. sneakers app and never complain again. I'll, that's me. I'll be like, you know, this is the best app <laughs> ever made. <laughs> but yeah, man, that was um. This is the current design, and um, it was a. It's. It took me a minute to think of that, but I think it's gonna be dope, man. Cause you got the material, you know, you got the colorway. That's a solid colorway, and I think the snakeskin as itself is going to add that one pop effect because it's all a neutral tone shoe. You know, you see gray patterns, you see gray tones. So let's offset it with some orange and hit it with some skin. So that's what I'm gonna do right there. And then you know I'm into rolling into the the Puma one like we talked about. Nice. And um, you got you got you got a few things uh, lined up with Puma. Oh, man, hopefully if they see this and go crazy. All right. You know, with me, it's because uh, – so I chose to do the, the Puma because, um, you know, it's funny that, you know, growing up, you know, you got kids that want to be break dance. I mean, you got kids – oop, I already spoiled it. You got kids that want to be pro athletes. You know, you got kids that want to be famous rappers, famous athletes. You know, you want to be a doctor. You know, me growing up, I always find it so funny, and I don't know how it even came about. I was obsessed with the New York City Breakers. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's weird. Like, not many people can say, yo, when I grow up, you know, I was like, bro, when me, I would love to be in the 1980s on cardboard. <laughs> Break dancing. Yeah, I was like, man, if I could be like the wave or action, man. <laughs> yo, <laughs> you know, flips. the way everything comes back full circle, we might hit that wave of just dudes just breakdancing again. Yeah, and it's funny, and it's like, uh, for me, it was, uh, you know, I'm going to do, um, 
You know, I'm going to add that New York flavor when they started chunky lacing in, in the shoes. So, you know, but I'm going to have my own version of it. I'm going to have a, an abstract twist to that. You know, it's something you got to understand the history behind it and pick up. But, you know, um, for me, I was like, bro, Puma, like nobody, I haven't seen, you know, I've seen the Kooji sweater Puma collab, you know, that was fire, but I haven't seen nothing like actually locally or someone who we follow on media, like actually like today, look at this Puma Clyde I've cooked up. And I was like, man, let me jump into it first. And, you know, considering that's like one of my favorite eras in, uh, you know, Beach Street's one of my favorite movies. Yeah. And, uh, you right. know, so I was like, man, let me, let me, uh, let me, let me just jump into my piece of little history that I love. So nah, you know what though, Puma, if you think about the way that they're positioning themselves and they just got yeah. mellow can blossom into a super great player. Like, I don't know if he'll be on Jordan or LeBron in terms of, <laughs> remember for a period of time, Steph Curry was selling a lot of sneakers. So if Melo could transition that with his Puma sneakers that he's releasing in December, the All Reds, Puma yeah. great shot up, man. And they got like a new directive marketing. I know they're working with Rock Nation as well. So like, oh man, are they? I didn't know this, that. Yeah, yeah. Because I think Melo's with Rock Nation, so they got him that deal. And their paper planes is through Puma. So all Melo got to do is ball out. So right now you're at that crevice of. You know what? If you're thinking about doing something about Puma, do it. Like we said before, mm -hmm. tag the right person. Yeah, for sure. That's the limit, man. They might onboard yeah. you to, to design something for them. Man, I would love that. And it's like, you know, and the, the reason, like you said, man, they, they are moving in a gradual good direction. And, you know, I think right now they started their comeback through hooping shoes right now. It's like how I feel. You know, they yeah. Kelly Oubre and all that stuff right there. So, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. man, they be messing with the rappers, too. So, I was like, man, I haven't seen it like a – they haven't popped no big streetwear collab yet, no. So I was like, man, let me just – let me add a little flavor to the game. Like I said, it takes one project. You never yeah. know. I mean, because you know? look at Adidas for – as much as we love Adidas, they're doing great with Yeezy and their originals, their basketball is lacking. So that's – Yeah. Puma can easily take them over in the next two or three years if they just stay – Absolutely. Up. Right now, they're kind of hitting everything out of the ballpark, but we'll just – Yeah, for sure. They that, they can trans, uh, transition to bringing them back all the original, like, Puma Clydes and things of that nature as well, you know? But they just they yeah. up with it, man. Just, no, just... man, for sure, yeah. So it's going to be fun, man. I think it'll be it'll be interesting. Uh, it's going to be a little construction on the shoe. It's something you got to be open to. It's something, you know, it's 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 going to be a little factor in there that, that you don't see every day on shoes. I will tell you that. I actually, you know, I, I've seen this through a dope little custom. Um, the idea was incredible, and you just got to be open to it and accept that. I'm accept at, the art factor of it. I'm about to make some Inspector Gadget Pumas out here, boy. <laughs> okay, click your heels three times. If <laughs> yo, Man, I... so everyone that's on the chat right now, if they want to reach out to you, what is the best way to reach out to get some inquiries or to send work your way? How do we do that? Uh, definitely, it's gonna be my Instagram at Rugged Zay. Um, you know, you'll see in my bio it's at Rugged Boys, but be careful of that page. That page is transitioning to a gallery where oh. I'm gonna be posting. You know, if like, you know, I'm gonna upload my website as well. I mean, you know, so I'm gonna start curating a lot of content and stuff right now. But uh, at Rugged Zay on Instagram is gonna be the primary one. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I have the Rugged Boys account, and there's gonna be a gallery. I have a lot of people who ask when they do customs or they want to discuss sneakers. They ask, what can I do? Mm -hmm. So as far as like, so I always, hey, refer to my Instagram page and you'll see a mixture of airbrush. You will see sewing. You will see graphics. You know, um, let me know what you are leaning towards and then I will fully, you know, dive in and, you know, take over from there. So yep. at Rugged Zay, R-U-G-G-E-D-Z-A-Y is the primary account to get a hold of me fastest way. That's that's and, perfect because I was telling the fellas we we gotta sit down and get a designated report Air Force One's popping maybe for the summer. Yo, Saint Soho, uh, brother, we were just my guy. Is he in here? We were just talking about you, my G. Art oh, Basel, well, bro, way throwback. <laughs> All, right. All right, my dude. Yo, thanks again for for joining us on talking. Yeah, absolutely, man. We're we're excited to see some of the stuff that you have in the future. You know that. We'll be a vessel for you to plug any work that you get, you know. Yeah, most definitely. Qu question for you too, man. Um, you know, let me, you know. Oh uh, man, since you're covering all media, man, what is um uh, the sneaker game 
what is it about designated kicks that's going to solidify you guys as you continue content? Because mm-hmm. you, you guys post a lot of dopes. Like, I will say with your page is that why I, I is my favorite page is because you guys just don't post drop. A lot of people will be like, Cool Gray 11, what are your thoughts? Mm-hmm. And they'll post a dope photo. But um, what is it? Why, why, do you, why do you do so much diverse content with sneakers in that? And just all of your media, though. But what, what is it about designated kicks that is – what made you want to start diversifying that stuff? Well, I got to tip my hat to my boy, King Alcide, in the comment. He started Designated Report. And it got to a point, especially in sports media, where it's like everything got to be clip bait, right? Yeah. And it's like, for sure. Know, the real sports stories, where it's like the good quality. Our thing is quality, all right? Yeah. If you look at any of our pages or any of our content, it's about quality. Even though we might not have a million followers yet. As long as the, uh, yeah. and the content is on point, people will come, right? So, Absolutely. Yo, it's a group of us. It's like six or seven of us that, like, curate content. Yeah, right? okay, yeah. We all got... Because I was like, man, you guys are on it, man. Consistent, very consistent, man. Very and, like, yep. um, like I said, I don't believe in follower amount. I believe in content, if it, is it worth. Because I won't even lie, no cap. I was watching that Squid Games toy model, the sneaker <laughs> model. And I was like, this is so fire. I didn't even know it was your guys' page when I looked at it. I was like, man, who fuck? And I was like, oh, yeah, there they go. But I, so I started curating the, uh, the sneakers page about a month ago. And my thing, okay. when it comes to sneakers, it's an easy to topic to curate because there's so much stuff out there. Like you said, yes. every Monday morning, I said, yo, these are the best drops of the week, and that's it. Right? Yeah. For you can sure. find things like, and I kind of copy. Uh, the style of hidden, you know, hidden NYC. I yeah, like I follow them too. Page. So I took a note from his page and said, okay, let me talk about some Vans, some Jays. I can't talk about Travis Scott sneakers every single day. Let me go to uh, to some throwback. Let me ask some questions. What are you feeling? So it's just about the curation game of how you can bring all the content together and absolutely what they want. Not every sure. Some people love Vans. Some people love New Balance. Give them a little bit of everything. You know. Yeah. So as long as that it stays in that path to me, yo, bro, I'll be having I got content ready for the next three weeks, man. That's dope, man. <clears throat> if you're able to share, man, where would y'all, you know, where would you want to take designated report? You know, where do you, where, where, as a team, where do you guys want to head this way? And wherever ESPN is at, above that. Oh, that would be fire. <laughs> with us though, you know, with some flavor. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Uh, like, yeah. You gotta have some flavor to it, man. When you cooking, you gotta season season the meat. You feel me? Like absolutely. Like it, to to us, it just got so watered down with content, and just everyone steals each other. I mean, if, if something happens in sports, we're gonna talk about it, but it's how you talk about it. Yeah, for real. You know, that's how you gotta do it. It's how you talk about yeah. it. Yeah, because like I've exactly like you said, it's dry. Like even like man, the world's famous complex. They'll just screenshot somebody's stuff and then just thoughts on these or drop this week it's so bland these days it, but dude so that's why it's like that flavor is i think is what is what is gonna oh, oh, solidify oh, and or give you longevity in that like barstool i remember my boy sent me something in barstool was like yo would you give lebron james a hand job for 10 million dollars i'm like yo fam what that gotta do with anything <laughs> no <laughs> yo, barstool i would follow them they're so weak right? now and and, and and that's why if we want to go deep about it that's why we need people like us in these meetings, because we, the term, yeah, we curate, but we live it. Absolutely. Right? We know when yeah. something is fire. We know yeah, what we need. We know the fashion trends. We see trends five years before it starts. Right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And that's like why I don't really engage with Instagram too much on a personal level, because I, I always say it's, it's, you live real life first. That's it. You know, I think a lot of people forget that factor because we're so used to pulling on our phones. But you know, the same you look at the same way how I pulled out these kits, right? Yeah, I copped them because I like them. I'm not copping. Absolutely. Them. X told me I gotta cop it. Exactly. I've been wearing J's since before Complex was even a thought. So how you gonna tell me how to curate something? Yeah. I be telling my homies, like, don't even post Travis Scott merch in our group chat, bro. You're going to make me mad. Like, Dude. I'm tired of seeing Brown. <laughs> yeah, when you had to go get kicks, you needed two or three dudes to hold it down for you just in case, bro. That's the yeah. era. I can't tell us how to curate something. Like, the fellas right. designated report, everyone's good at something, you know? That's dope, man. That's dope. 
And I think just stay consistent with it. Just like your work, I'll tell you, stay consistent with it. That's all it is. Appreciate you. You as well, man. Bro, that's, that's, and that's, that's true. That's very true. Because if you listen to like a dude like Sushi uh, Surgeon when he went and did a podcast, he was damn near homeless, bro, but he kept at it. He actually yeah. got better. He stuck with it. And now look at him. All right, say, say, I think I seen I watched his uh him and causes their blueprint, man. And they were out their bedrooms, out the garages, just how like I started. So as you know. Yep. Let's level I, through it. Oh, trendsetters, we live it, man. Yo, sure. Saying Soho saying some sneakers, Sean. I don't know why you ain't hit us up yet. <laughs> Yo, but get it again, get it in. My dude, thank thanks a lot for uh again to jumping on. Yeah, absolutely. It's gonna man. be first of many, man. I'll tell you this right now. We're going to try to figure out a way to make it to uh, to Portland. Come hang yeah, with Yeah, man. And I'm close to – man, my brother goes to uh, – actually, he goes to New York next month. And uh, I might be – I'm trying to see if I can find time to run out there. So if I can wiggle that way, man. Bro, if you come out here, let's, let's link up. Yeah. All right. And I'm actually supposed to be heading that way January if it all goes as planned as well. So, bro, man. We'll be um, – Man, deep. thank you. But yo. Bro, keep up the good work. All right. Appreciate it, man. Glad That's to see you guys are doing good. Glad to see you guys are healthy, man. Uh, thank you. Thanks all it, man. It's been thank a while. But, yeah, I'm going to hit you up, bro. Absolutely, man. I'm out. One. All right.